so happy to have with us uh, Kristen Reifel, who is Dr. Kristen Reifel, who is the manager of our outpatient therapy program at the Valley Hospital, and Jillian Passanante. She is a physical therapist with the Valley Hospital, and they are going to be speaking to you about this important topic. Enjoy the program, everyone. Thank you, Sue. Uh, so as Sue said, my name is Kristen Reifel. I just want to give you a little bit of background about myself, and then Jillian will also share. So I went to the University of Scranton for both undergraduate and grad school. I had um, an exercise science degree in undergrad and a doctoral degree in physical therapy in grad school. After grad school, I did a clinical rotation at a vestibular rehab, and we'll get into what vestibular means a little bit more, but it was a 12-week program where I was only treating dizzy patients. And after that, I did some specialty training at Emory in Georgia to really focus on this population. Hello, my name is Jillian. Um, I graduated from Boston University for both my undergraduate degree and my physical therapy degree. Uh, during my time studying, I spent kind of two clinical rotations at neuro rehab hospitals. Um, where I enjoyed treating uh, patients who had some balance issues and dizziness issues. Um, I've been with Valley for about three years, and I really enjoy treating a large uh, variety of different diagnoses, but particularly balance and dizziness. Okay, so we're going to get started, and we just want to start by saying that wait, falls are not a normal part of aging. And I know that a lot of people think that they are, but they're actually not. So there are some things that we're gonna talk about how to prevent falls and um, what you can do there and what balance really is. So we're gonna start on how, do you, uh, how does your body keep you steady? So it's a few things. So first you need to be able to sense that you're falling um, in order to catch yourself, right? So in order to sense that you're falling, you have three different body systems that help with this. They're sensory systems. So the first is your eyes. Uh, so most of us can probably picture a time that we were walking in the dark and we felt a little bit less stable. So you need to be able to see if your world is going. Next is your position sense from all your joints. So that's your ankles, your knees, your hips, um, your body. If you're leaning one way, you can feel more weight on your right foot versus your left foot. And that's that position sense of all your joints that are helping tell your brain where you are. And last is your inner ear or your vestibular system. And not a lot of people know about this system unless they've had dizziness or vertigo in the past, but we're gonna dive into what that is a little bit later and what you can do if you have issues in that system. Then after you actually can sense that you're falling, you need to be able to catch or correct yourself. So first you need to have the muscular strength. You need to be able to, let's say it's core strength. If you start to fall, you need to be able to pull yourself back. You also have to have flexibility. If you don't have enough, for example, knee uh, bending flexibility, then going down the stairs is gonna be difficult. And you have to have a reaction time. It's great if you can sense that you're falling. It's great that if you can have the strength to catch that you're falling, but if you don't do it in time, we know the outcome. And finally, and what people don't really think about is emotions. And emotions and past experiences can really uh, influence how you move and how you balance. So I'll give you two examples. First, if you were to go to a really heavy door and you were walking up to the door and you're seeing it and you're thinking this looks really heavy, you're gonna put a lot of pressure in it. And then what happens if that door is really light? You're gonna fly right through. So that past experience changed how you manage that situation. Another one is balanced confidence. So if you're not confident, and let's say you're walking and you're dragging your feet to get, you don't wanna pick your feet up, what happens if you hit a lip in the curb? You might tumble that way. So you need to be able to sense, you need to be able to correct, and your past experience are gonna shape how you react. So there are many reasons that help to contribute to uh, falling. Some are external factors or factors that kind of you can control. And the other ones are internal factors or intrinsic factors that have to do within your body. So um, we'll start with the external factors to start with. 
Um, the first factor is medication. So oftentimes um, with different medications, there can be side effects uh, that include dizziness um, and that can contribute to your risk of falling. Also, if you're taking more than one medication at a time, greater than six medications, that can contribute to your um, risk of falling as well. So another external factor is an improper use of an assistive device. So an assistive device includes canes, walkers, crutches. So if those assistive devices are not properly set for your height or you're using them incorrectly, that can also contribute to your risk of fall. You might um, trip over the leg of the walker. Um, another external factor are home hazards. So there's a lot of different items around your house that can contribute to your risk of falling. Kristen, Kristen mentioned before that um, if you don't have vision or if you're seeing uh, or you're trying to look in a dark environment, it makes your balance a little bit uneven. So going off that, if you have any dim lighting in your house, that can contribute to your risk of fall. So it's important to make sure your environment is nicely lit. Um, additionally, there might be kind of rugs on your floor that are starting to peel up on the corners. Those can contribute to a fall risk. Um, you might not kind of see them in your everyday life. Your foot catches um, and that increases your risk of falling. Um, proper footwear. So if you're wearing like high heels or shoes that aren't really fitted to your foot and you're kind of shuffling your feet or dragging your feet, you're more likely to trip and that could increase your risk of falls. Lastly, kind of going over those external factors, um, uneven surfaces you have to watch out for. So if you picture walking in the parking lot, especially in the winter after plows have been kind of driving through making potholes, um, those can contribute to your risk of fall. So you really need to look where you're going to make sure that your foot doesn't kind of catch a divot um, and catch a pothole. Um, so we went over those external factors and now we're gonna go over some internal factors. And those are factors that are kind of within your body. So the first one is slow reaction time associated with aging. Um, so as you get older, your reaction times as, are not as quick. Um, so that's just something to be mindful of. Um, as a result of that, you really want to kind of use your other sensory systems like your vision um, to kind of make up for that slow reaction time. Um, Additionally, as Kristen had mentioned before, previous falls or fear of falling, um, that kind of anxiety towards that can contribute to an increased risk of falls. Um, so you need to be able to have kind of strong core, strong leg muscles in order to catch yourself if you start falling. Um, it's important to try to check your vision. Um, if you feel like you're losing your vision acuity or starting to get a little blurry vision, it's a great idea to maybe make an appointment with a medical professional to get your eyes checked. So the better the eye vision, the better um, or the less chance of falling that you'll have. Um, oftentimes people will kind of sit up quickly from laying down or stand up quickly from sitting down. And you might be experiencing some lightheadedness or extra dizziness, and that's called postural hypotension. What that means is just you need to give your body a second to let the blood pressure adjust. So if you're laying down and you go to a sitting position, just wait there for about two seconds. Let the dizziness subside before you stand up. Just waiting that extra two seconds could really help to decrease, decrease your risk of falls. Another um, internal factor associated with um, your balance is decreased sensation. So if, it, if you can't feel the ground underneath you, it's harder to know kind of where you are in space and that contributes to your risk of falls. If you can picture almost walking on the sand, it's harder to feel like a hard ground underneath you if you're walking on sand and it makes it a little bit harder to walk. Um, lastly, some medical conditions can contribute to um, decreased balance and those include arthritis, stroke, incontinence, diabetes, and vertigo. Um, so there are kind of side effects associated with these different conditions um, that you just have to be a little bit more mindful of um, in order to decrease your risk of falling. Okay, so how can you prevent falls? 
So there's a wide variety of ways to prevent falls, and it's important that we kind of target them at all angles. Um, so the first way is annual doctor visits. So like we had mentioned before, um, for example, your vision is uh, very important in your balance and your dizziness. So if you can make a regular appointment with your eye doctor to double check your visual acuity, that will um, help with falls also. Uh, for example, if you go to the doctor just to try to check your sensation every once in a while um, to help reduce your risk of falls. Uh, additionally, um, it's important to wear proper footwear. So you wanna make sure that you have a shoe that fits your foot really well. It's not too big for you. Um, and if you have a condition that we mentioned on the last slide that affects your ability to kind of feel your feet, it's important to check your feet every now and again um, to make sure um, your braces and your orthotics are, are fitting you well to decrease your risk of falls. Um, so home safety checks. So you wanna make sure that your house or your apartment is nicely lit so you can see everything around you. If you don't have um, like a handle or a grab bar when going up the stairs, um, you have to be a little bit more careful when you're um, going up and down the stairs, maybe double check with your vision, make sure there's nothing in your path because you don't have anything to grab onto. Um, and it's important to get rid of unnecessary throw rugs or maybe a pet bed that's in the middle of the room. Try to put it to the side of the room so it's not in your direct walking path. Okay, so there's a lot of different ways to manage your dizziness. Um, dizziness can come from a variety of factors. Um, so the first factor is kind of medication. So we want to make sure that you're speaking with your doctor to determine if there's any medication side effects that could be causing your dizziness or your sense of imbalance. Um, also kind of medical management of your dizziness. So as we had talked about before, there is something called orthostatic hypotension, which just means that when you move from a lying position to a sitting position, it's likely that you could get lightheaded. So just waiting that extra two seconds before standing up can really help to um, decrease your risk of being dizzy. Um, <clears throat> So oftentimes um, when you come for physical therapy for dizziness, um, we'll be checking your blood pressure, we'll be checking kind of your lightheadedness to see if that can contribute to um, your sense of dizziness. Um, so as I had mentioned before, so just some safety tips when changing positions to combat that orthostatic hypotension. When getting out of bed, just sit for a minute on the side of the bed, completely wait for all that dizziness and lightheadedness to subside before standing up and going for a walk. You never really wanna to start to walk um, when you're still feeling pretty dizzy. Um, and another idea to help with the dizziness is stay hydrated. So the more water you drink, um, the less risk of falling because your blood pressure will be nicely managed. Um, and lastly, to improve your dizziness, it's important that you come for a vestibular rehabilitation. So as we had mentioned, there's a bunch of different ways that, um, or a bunch of different reasons that contribute to your dizziness. So it's important that you come for vestibular rehab in physical therapy so we can help identify exactly what issue is causing you the most distress. Okay, thank you, Jillian. Um, so I think one of the biggest points that Jillian made is that there are some things that you can manage on your own at home. There's some things that you want to seek um, assistance from uh, your medical doctor, and then there's some things that we can help as physical therapists. <clears throat> Particularly about the medication, you want to make sure that you're really medically managing your blood pressure. Um, so PT is not necessarily going to modify your blood pressure, but one thing we can um, ad, advise you of is your vestibular system. And what is that? A lot of people don't really know what the vestibular system is. So I have a cool little picture here. And um, I don't know if you can see my pointer, but if you could see the out, oh, we'll go back. If you could see the outer ear, and if you were, um, if I was a doctor looking into your ear, the furthest I could look is your eardrum, which is about here. 
Then you have a section where you have all the little bones, that's your middle ear. And then even deep to that is your inner ear. So your inner ear is also known as your vestibular system. Your vestibular system has three main functions. And those are to keep your eyes steady when your head moves. So an example is if I'm looking at the screen here and I turn my head, my eyes need to stay on target. And that is something of the vestibular system. If not, basically what would happen is I would turn my head, my eyes would go with my head, and then my eyes would come back to target. So gaze stabilization is one of the major functions of the vestibular system. The next is spatial orientation. And that's really just telling your brain where your head is in space. If my head is tilted, my vestibular system is what's telling my brain that. And then finally, postural stability. And that's um, actually kind of a reflex so that when your head is turning or your um, vestibular system is telling your brain where it is, it's actually helping uh, your muscles know which ones need to relax and which ones need to contract to keep you upright. So because my picture is small, I got you another lovely photo. This is a very fancy uh, picture of the vestibular system. So the snail looking end that looks like the snail end of a shell here, that's your actual hearing organ. And then the rest of it with the loop-de-loops, those are, that's all your vestibular system. So you have um, two major parts. You have the middle part here, and then you have these semicircular canals. So we'll get into what some of that stuff does. But first, you're probably wondering, what does vestibular therapy do? So basically, there's a large amount of, or a lot of diagnoses that could cause issues or dysfunction to the vestibular system. So what we do is we retrain the brain. So we either give you strategies to compensate, we teach you how to habituate, which might mean if you get motion sickness, we may put you in situations until you no longer feel that, or we might give you strategies to adapt, um, particularly as it pertains to that gaze stabilization we spoke about. Uh, we also will do balance activities because as you remember from the second slide, your vestibular system is one of the main sensory systems that help you sense when you're falling. So balance is very important to tie it all back into function. And then finally, repositioning maneuvers. And so some of you may have heard the term loose crystals. Um, this one I wanna talk about for quite some time. And the reason why is this, this particular issue of vertigo, it's called positional vertigo, also known as BPPV. What happens is patients or people, they get up or they change positions, whether that's laying down, bending over to wash your face, whatever it may be. And you actually have spinning that lasts for a few seconds to about a minute. And people think this is normal. They get it confused with what Jillian was talking about when your blood pressure drops and feeling lightheaded. And they're not the same thing. And it's very easily fixed. So it can be really scary too. Sometimes you get up, you feel fine, you take a few steps, and then the vertigo, the dizziness really starts. And if you're walking, that can be really scary. So I'm going to teach you a little bit more about this because this is one of the most fun things that Jillian and I treat in the clinic. So what is it and uh, how do you fix it? So what it is, is every inner ear has crystals in it. And those crystals actually do great things when they're where they're supposed to be. So if you take an elevator up, as an example, if you ever take an elevator, if you, you can't see anything, there's no windows, right? But if you forget to push the button, you know that you're not moving. And that's because the crystals in your inner ear pick up that movement. It's the same thing as accelerating in an airplane or coming down from an airplane, right? That landing, you can feel that in your head and that's what your crystals do. Unfortunately, sometimes your crystals get knocked loose. They go where they're not supposed to be. And they don't really know what the cause is. They have some correlations. They think maybe it has something to do with blood pressure. Maybe it has something to do with um, bone density. Uh, or even if you had a concussion or a head injury in the past, but there really is no specific cause or an effect. So what we do is we actually reposition your head to get the crystals um, out of where they're not supposed to be and in where they are supposed to be. So 
um, unfortunately, like we mentioned, what it is, is you feel this false sense of moving, movement, which can be really scary. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna show you what it looks like to um, fix this. And you can see this picture kind of has how it's done, but I think it's probably best for us to do a demonstration. But the best, um, I guess, visualization that I could give you is if you've ever seen one of those labyrinth puzzles where there's a ball in a wooden puzzle and you have to move the puzzle to get the ball where it needs to be, we're basically doing that with your head. So I'm gonna show you now, Jillian's gonna be my model and just bear with me because I'm actually gonna plug in and put a headset on so you can hear me well. So hold on. It usually takes just a second to connect. Sue, if you could give me a thumbs up if you hear me through the headset or if you're still hearing me through the computer. I'm not sure. I can I can hear you. We can oh, hear you. Okay. Hold on. Still through the computer. I'm gonna try. You there? I can hear you through the computer. Hold on. I can hear you. Just speak up a little. Can you hear now? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. So what I'm going to do first, and as always, is I'm going to clean my hands. The most important thing that we can do, right? So I'm going to use some hand sanitizer here. And I'm going to have Jillian come sit on the table. So what I usually say is you're going to sit on the table and you're going to swing your legs up, but don't lay down just yet. And I'm gonna just raise the table up slightly. Excellent. Okay, so what we do here, because I'm getting tangled, my apologies, is what we'll do is we'll actually have Jillian turn her head one way and then I'll have her come lay down. So she comes and lays down and her head falls off the table. And at this point, and if you've had this before, you know that this is gonna be a very uncomfortable position. The room might be spinning. And what we do as clinicians is we look at your eyes. And so what if you're spinning right now and you have this crystals issue, we would see your eyes moving. After waiting about 30 seconds after your dizziness subsides, we then actually turn your head to the other way. So again, the picture on the screen sort of describes this, but we're moving your head in a position to get the crystals up and out of the canal where it's not supposed to be. The next step, and on our small table here, we have bigger tables, but for this example, I, I, Jillian's not gonna roll off, but we'd roll over to the side. Now your nose is pointed towards the floor. We're on that last position where the crystals might, um, we're like right at the top to fall right out. And then the next step would be to have your feet fall off you come sit up and it's that quick. That's all you need to do. And we can actually get rid of this entire issue. So it's very important that if you think this is something that you have, that you come and get treatment for it. Because people, um, I actually just yesterday saw somebody who's been having this issue for six months and has fallen multiple times when it's completely unnecessary for that. So I'm gonna unplug my headset now, hold on. and we'll keep going. Okay, so we just wanted to give you guys um, an idea of some exercises to start with that help to improve your balance and your muscle strength. So it's important that if you're doing any activity at home on your own, that you're in an area that doesn't have a lot of clutter, it's safe, there's something to grab onto just in case you start to lose your balance. So what I like to do is recommend um, doing any activity in the kitchen. That way you can quickly grab onto the kitchen counter or have your hands kind of near the kitchen counter just in case you need to grab on quickly. All right. So a few exercises um, that can help to prevent some falls include um, heel raises. So as you can see in the picture, um, the individuals are holding onto a chair. 
for balance. So in this specific instance, it's your calf muscles that are getting the exercise when you go up onto your toes, but you don't wanna do it in the middle of the room where you have nothing to grab onto. So doing it in front of the kitchen counter or in front of a chair is always a good idea. Um, another exercise that could be helpful with both improving your muscle strength and your balance include, um, include sitting and standing. So this is a common thing done throughout your everyday activity. Um, so when you're sitting up from the couch, maybe going to the kitchen, um, you can try just not standing once, but sitting and standing a few times in a row to really build up your hip strength and help, which it helps to improve your balance. Um, so these are just very general exercises that can help to improve your um, muscle strength and your balance. These exercises might not be the perfect ones for you. So it's important that if you do have balance issues, you seek guidance from us to figure out what exercises and what routines work best to help you. And I wouldn't be the manager of the department if I didn't take a moment to advocate for us. So I do want you to see that um, we do have three locations, very convenient locations, two in Ridgewood and one in Mawa. We have um, two very nice services for people who feel that they may be at fault, like having a fall risk or um, have that issue or any of these vestibular issues that we spoke about. So we have a gravity assessment and what that does is you get a one-on-one -on -one individualized assessment with a physical therapist for, um, for an hour. And then you also get to see an occupational therapist. Um, you do a one-on-one -on -one evaluation with them as well to discuss home safety and any modifications or equipment you might need. As for a vestibular evaluation, we do have vestibular specialists at each location. Um, I personally treat at the 505 Gothel Road location. Jillian treats at the Mawa location and we have another vestibular specialist named Alex at the Ridgewood location. Um, and I welcome you to come meet us in person. And then I just wanted to add one more thing in case this wasn't a service that you were aware of. If you're a Bergen County resident, there is something called chore and chore is a really wonderful service. And what they do is they'll install grab bars, they'll fix um, like some safety repairs, like a broken step. And they don't, um, they don't charge you for those repairs. You do have to pay for the parts, um, but you don't have to pay for the labor. And the idea is that uh, a bunch of volunteers want to make sure that you're safe in your home and that if you don't have a grab bar and you need one, you can have one at um, an affordable cost. So prevention. Um, that's really the most important thing you can do, right? You don't want to be reacting to a fall you've had or a near fall. So what you really want to be doing is taking some of these tips that we shared with you today. Um, Learning is really the first step. So what can you do to lower your risk? Is it something you're going to do at home? Is it something that you're going to speak to your physician about? Or is it coming and seeing us at one of our locations? And just remember that there's no magic um, or universal formula. And if there was, Jillian and I, and we knew it, we wouldn't be working. We'd be very, very rich. So um, please come for your individualized assessment. And thank you very much. Okay, thank you. That was wonderful. We do have a few questions. Thank you both. Um, so a uh, couple questions about the um, that exercise you just did, the vestibular um, treatment, if you will, I guess. Um, um, so you had mentioned something about a head injury. Have, is there any um, research that kind of shows that that is something that is, is good for a head injury? Is there any you know, awareness about that at all? Yeah, so, well, to be specific, the exercise that I showed you um, where we're actually repositioning those crystals is for the diagnosis of loose crystals or positional vertigo or BPVV. So that's not a treatment for head injury necessarily. It's a treatment for the positional vertigo. Positional vertigo can be something that happens after a head injury. But as vestibular specialists, um, concussion is something that we do manage um, mm -hmm. on site. So I, I don't know if that answers the question perfectly, but I hope it does. Yeah, I think so. I think um, that may happen more than we think, I guess, you know. So 
Great. So if you are experiencing dizziness, obviously you guys are good people to go to, but is there any particular type of doctor that you would suggest that you go to for a dizziness issue? Um, so a good kind of resource would be to go to a neurologist if you have one, or also an ENT, ear, nose, and throat doctor. But your general practitioner can kind of act as um, a gateway to kind of put you in the right direction, depending upon what you specifically need. Okay, thank you. Um, is there a modified position you can um, do those exercises in if you can't lie flat? Is there another way that you'd be treating yes. like that? Mm -hmm. uh, so one thing that Jillian and I are very skilled at is finding creative ways to get to the the root of the problem. So Basically, what you really need to do is um, have your, it's basically where your head is versus the floor, right? So we want your head to be tilted, but maybe if you have, um, like I've treated people who are in one of those halo braces, you know, maybe we move your whole body to lay you down. Uh, maybe we get a large wedge and you lay down that way. So it's really more where your head is and not where your body is, but a physical a vestibular specialist will be able to make those modifications for you. Great. Um, you may have mentioned this, forgive me, but um, do, you, do you have any more commentary about just vasovagal uh, syncope, you know, fainting from that? Is that similar, I guess, as a, another issue that causes falls? And what would you do about that, I guess? Yeah, so that's really more medically managed. Um, and sometimes it gets confused. So uh, we'll test for it if you like we can do a test, a blood pressure test, where we test your blood pressure laying down, then we test your blood pressure sitting up. And if there's a certain level of pressure drop, then we um, will really point you in the direction of somebody who can help medically manage that. Um, Jillian gave those safety tips, which is very important, um, but sometimes it's a little confusing if it's really a blood pressure drop with position changes, or if it's position pos positional vertigo, because not everyone with positional vertigo will say that the room is spinning, but it is a large percentage of them. Sorry, I put myself on mute. Um, do you have any tips um, regarding using a, a Bozu Bode at home by any chance? Are you familiar with that? A Bozu ball, I think? Yes. You wanna take it? <laughs> yeah, so a BOSU ball is actually what's pictured in the last um, slide. So it's a great tool to use for some balance training. It is a pretty advanced uh, tool for uh, working on your balance. So it's important that you feel really confident with it. Um, and you may need some just kind of small training on how to use it properly. Great. And um, for treatment for, maybe it's the same thing as the vasovagal, but for treatment for like a chronic motion sickness, is that something you can speak to? Uh, yeah, and it really depends on the severity of the motion sickness because what people don't really understand is you can actually get motion sickness walking. You can get motion sickness um, laying or rolling in bed. So uh, there is a, a, a very nice standardized tool. It's called the motion sensitivity quotient. And we can run you through a battery of tests and we find what positions and movements actually cause the motion sickness. And then um, weirdly enough, we'll make you repeat those <laughs> until your brain no longer um, picks that up as an error. So I like to call that a little bit um, habituation in terms of we're really giving you little doses of error until your brain can kind of modify and adjust. Great. A couple people asked about this sensation of once they're getting up out of a sitting state or waking up in particular, there's sort of a pull to go, I guess a neurologist might actually deal with, you know, manage this, but there's sort of this full pull, um, pull to uh, go backward, almost like a, um, almost like a very powerful sensation of being pulled down. Have you guys heard of that? Or would that be something a neurologist would uh, handle? Uh, yeah, so oftentimes uh, when you've been laying down for an extended period of time, and then you decide to sit up maybe on the edge of the bed, you have to really engage your core muscles or your stomach muscles in order to keep you um, sitting nicely and, and have good sitting balance. Um, so oftentimes it's 
people have um, weaker core muscles, uh, they're more likely to kind of lean posteriorly or backwards. Um, so sometimes it's a matter of just kind of improving your muscle strength. And if I can okay. just elaborate. Um, it's uh, Jillian's completely correct. And again, vertigo, I've been using the word spinning, but uh, vertigo by definition is just a false sense of movement. So sometimes a feeling of being pulled back um, can certainly be uh, a positional vertical, vertigo issue. Um, but if it's really being reported by a lot of people, like the chances are it's really your muscles are sort of turned off from sleeping. All right, that answers a lot. Thank you so much. This has been so informative, very relatable.